February is our pledge campaign. It's been a tradition here for over 12 years now. Actually, I think this might be the 13th year. Uh, it was a brainchild of Ruth Bennett. Ruth was on the board of trustees and realized that our center needed to realize how much money we would have to use to keep our church prosperous. And so she came up with the idea of starting a pledge campaign in order to figure out what expenses we had and how we could use our money the best. We want to thank Ruth Bennett for this wonderful opportunity to show our support for this place that we love so dearly. Some of us still remember Ruth and her sock puppets. How many of you remember that? Yeah. Uh, Ruth later went on to become a practitioner, and now she's a resident of the country of Ecuador. But let's give her a big hand. As when we first began, we still try to make the pledge campaign fun and enjoyable event. This year we're doing a series of four skits entitled Wicked Meets Oz. As we follow Wicked uh, on her journey as she met Scarecrow last week, and this week you're going to see her journey where she meets another one of the Oz characters, which will be revealed shortly. So sit down and enjoy. I now give you your... Narrator. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I had this crazy dream about the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. My dream was very vivid, and it seemed real. However, it was strange because the Tin Man wasn't really made of tin, and the Wicked Witch wasn't really wicked. In fact, she was rather flirtatious. And there were these crazy little munchkins, little munchkins, <laughs> handing out flowers <laughs> and singing a song. It's time to give out the flowers, munchkins. <laughs> and they were singing this song. Somewhere over the rainbow, flowers grow. We want to introduce you just to say hello. I give you Wicked and the Tin Man. like the Tin Man. I had a heart of steel, and I cut no one any slack. If I saw an old man grumbling across the street, I'd give him a ticket for jaywalking. If there was an old lady driving slowly down the street, I'd give her a ticket for obstructing traffic. I had a cold heart and a quick temper. What changed you? Well, one Sunday, my neighbor tricked me, tricked me into coming to this very center on the promise of a free meal and donuts. <laughs> there you go. When I arrived, I was greeted by a tall, thin cowboy who gave me a bulletin and a warm smile. And when I entered the center, I was greeted by people, welcomed by people who made me feel like I belonged here. Okay. Yeah. And what about the little lady? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 they, yes. And they had a lady that like, belonged here. And there was a silver haired lady had this radiant glow about her who gave a talk about how you can change your thoughts and change your life. And I started to change. My heart melted and my quick tempered thawed. Yeah. This place seems to infect people that way. Last week, I met a guy named Scarecrow, who said he pledges a portion of his money to this place. Now, that's a scary thought. Not only was he scary, but I think he was a bit crazy. 
Oh no, that's Scarecrow. He's my best friend and he's very smart. You see, it all depends on how you look at it. You see it as throwing money away. We look at it as saving, protecting the place we love. It costs money to run a church. There's the mortgage. There's an electric bill. There's the water bill. There's the wages for the minister. There's the wages for the music director. There's the wages for the sound directors. And so much more. And don't forget about the money for food and cookies and coffee. <laughs> Cook, oh, cookies and food are donated by our congregation. And they also volunteer to work in the kitchen. They volunteer to take out their trash. And they volunteer to greet people as they come in. And there, we have practitioners who pray for us. And we have a board of trustees that works hard to make this a warm and welcoming place. I kind of think of this as my spiritual home. I'll check my purse and see if I don't have a dollar to spare well, to help should, out. Should you come to love this place and our family, you might consider pledging an annual amount so that we can always keep our doors open. Well, thanks for that information, but all I plan to give is my annual $5 to the Witch's Broom Fund. Perhaps I could persuade you to ride on my broom sometime. Oh, hey, what do you I think see my about that, Mr. Tim? There. We'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> Once you see the beautiful broom he made. Yeah. <laughs> We have, over, as of the end of last Sunday, we have 21,000, oh, sorry. As of the end of last Sunday, we have $21,000, and we had probably about six lollipop sticks. I don't know how many we have now, but uh, we're filling up the yellow brick road very, very rapidly. I suspect next week we'll see tens of thousands of dollars of an increase. If you haven't pledged yet and you'd like, we have pledge cards. We take them right over here, and then we put your name up here. So please pledge and enjoy next week when uh, Wicked meets the, who am I missing? The lion, yes. Enjoy. Thank you.
Happy Super Bowl Sunday for, other, for those who care. <laughs> um, I just want to say, as treasurer, thank you very much. The lollipops have really grown, but this is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> so there's still a couple more weeks. Let's try to get the whole wall full if we can. All right. So... My name is David Burke, if you don't know me. I am your trustee on duty this morning. On behalf of Reverend Donna Maurer, the Board of Trustees, our fantastic practitioner team, I am privileged to welcome you to the Sonoran Desert Center for Spiritual Living. Whoever you are, and wherever you are on your spiritual path, you are truly welcome here. You will be validated, supported, and encouraged to be all that we were meant to be. Our vision statement is love in action every day in every way. We express this love by learning and living the principles of the science of mind. On the back of our programs, you will find our declaration of principles. Please join me now in reading them. I believe there is an influence of intelligence operating throughout the universe. I believe this intelligent power is only good. I believe this intelligence expresses as me. I believe through my conscious use of this power, I create my life as happy, healthy, and complete. And so it is. Do we have any first-timers today? I didn't think so. Um, please, everyone stay after. Have some of the wonderful treats in the back. And give hugs to your spiritual family. Um, I would like to thank the people who make this Sunday celebration happen and perfect every week. We have so many people who help out, but it's mostly you and the chairs that make the difference. Um, please direct your attention to the announcements that are in your bulletin. And if you're watching online, please visit cslaz.org for our announcements and event calendar. God in me beholds the God in you. It is all for our greatest and highest good. The 
God in me beholds the God in you, and you and I are one. Namaste. The God in me beholds the God in you. It is all for our greatest and highest good. The God in me beholds the God in you, and you and I are one. Namaste. Namaste. Good morning. My name is Melinda, and I'm your practitioner today. I want to mention the foundations class is one of the few that we actually use the Science of Mind textbook. And um, so if you are thinking about being on the board now or in the future, this class is actually required for you um, at any time. And if there's a couple of people that are interested in coming but they don't want to come to every single group, and that's perfectly all right, and I'll adjust the fee for you. During a uh, private session with a practitioner, we listen with a desire to help the client. We inquire to discover what you really want. We teach you to be your own master and close with a personal treatment. Our phone numbers are listed on the back of your pro program so you can give us a call to make an appointment and there is a fee for that. So I'm gonna light this candle representing that beautiful light we all have within. And we really seriously do emit light from our bodies. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So <laughs> for our invocation, let's settle into this, the precious spiritual beings we are. Breathe in and say to yourself, I am an individualized spirit being, spiritual being. Relax into that knowing and know that our spiritual center is here to love us and guide us into a new way of thinking and being. Here we learn how to pray for our desires, how to start each day anew, how to forgive one another, how to celebrate this one precious life. Today is a good day to have a good day. We create our lives from the aspects of source with love, peace, and community spirit. In appreciation for the Sonoran Desert players, our practitioners, and Reverend Donna, together we say, and so it is. And I take this candle over to the prayer table, which is now open for your prayer request, and I will hold the high watch. Thank you. For today's special music selection, um, I'm going to do a song that I've done for you many times before. And it is, in fact, this week from The Wizard of Oz. Um, For those of you who are watching at home, I have a vast and varied and fabled history with this. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, Dorothy was my senior part in high school. <laughs> and <laughs> there I was, 16 years old, uh, going, oh, 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 not realizing at that point that Dorothy was a symbol of the hero's journey that Joseph Campbell teaches us about. When she experiences everything that she has to go through, including dark nights of the soul, coming back and realizing that everything that she had was right there in her own backyard. So I'm going to be gentle with myself today, because you can probably hear I'm not 100% today, but that's all right. You know? I heard a, a great quote this week uh, that said, if you feel 80% and you show up and you do 80%, you've actually done your 100%. Isn't that, oh, isn't that freedom to feel that? 
Mm. All right. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first off, I would like to thank Melinda for stepping in for me last week. She did a marvelous job, and um, it, it makes me feel really good to know that <laughs> to know that I don't have to be here, and and I still have a beautiful, wonderful, phenomenal service. So. Um, it gives me a lot of confidence in what I can and can't do. <laughs> um, and I also want to thank, of course, Don and Lynn and Heather, our Sonoran players, our choir, as Wicked is introduced to our Tin Man, uh, who is a lawman who spent years without a heart. But thanks to our center and the wonderful people in it, uh, he's changed his attitude and his heart is full. And he's now helping Wicked see that same love. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, tells us to understand our unity with God is a beginning of wisdom. To realize that we can express our divinity today should be the start of a conscious practice that will gradually conduct us to a greater and greater experience of life. Thus, we will demonstrate not only that an infinite good exists, but that it is now operating in our experience. This is the purpose of the practice of the science of mind. Our theme, Be Ye Transformed, is found in Romans. The apostle Paul tells his audience, and be not conformed to this world 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And our topic today is a cheerful heart. You know, there's quite a few scriptures that refer to a cheerful heart, such as a cheerful or a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But I found an African proverb that I liked. The owner of a cheerful heart will find his joy ever increasing. I like the idea of being the owner, the owner of a cheerful heart. Our 10 men on becoming a part of our center and practicing science of mind principles tells us that his heart was melted and his quick temper was thawed. He became the owner of a cheerful heart when he began to trust spirit and the principles that we teach. There's an ancient Hindu story of a beggar who had been begging for a few days in a small dusty town without much success. Then suddenly he saw in the distance the golden chariot of the king He started to dance for joy. His hopes rose, and he believed the king would bestow on him alms and wealth. The king, however, confounded all his expectations when he stopped his chariot and asked the beggar, what have you got to give to me? The beggar thought that this was some kind of mad joke. What could he, a beggar, have to give someone who has everything? So gingerly and with much reluctance, the beggar took only one tiny little grain of corn out of the small bag he always carried with him so he would have something to munch on. When at day's end, he came to empty the bag out on the floor of his hut, he found, to his great surprise, that one of the grains of corn had turned to gold. And the beggar wept and wished that he had had the heart, the generosity, and the wisdom to give the king all that he had. And it's a lesson for all of us, really. When we truly embody the feeling that we are all expressions of that one life, we find that in giving from our heart, we receive so much more than we could ever give. We can give freely all of the grains of our corn because we know we can't outgive God. There's an infinite flow of supply that opens when we do. Our, our tin man expressed this when he talked to Wicked about giving. He said, You see it as throwing money away, we see it as protecting something that we love. Well, this is the second week of our compla- uh, campaign, pledge campaign. And <laughs> for many, if, you're, if you're rather new to us or if this is your first time seeing us do a pledge campaign, you know it's not like m- most others in the world. Because <laughs> um, yeah, I remember from my days as a Presbyterian when the treasurer would come forward with a dire face and telling us that we must increase our pledge amount and then he would give us a list of programs that might be closing if we didn't meet our budget or our, our pledge goal. And so most people not wanting those programs to close would give a bit more, but not with enthusiasm. <laughs> you and I, we believe, this teaching believes in the law of circulation, which simply means that what we give out returns to us multiplied. And we believe that the consciousness that underlies our giving is more important than the giving itself. What are we giving with? Are we giving with a cheerful heart? And we want to teach this law because it's one of those special miracles that when we do give with a loving heart, we receive back even more than we give. But if we give grudgingly, it is that consciousness that will return to us. Yeah, I once heard a minister of the science of mind say as a Sunday offering was being taken, as a matter of fact, it might have been Reverend Peggy, but I remember that the, the statement was, if you are giving from a place of lack or a place of fear or a place of resentment, 
please put your money away until you can give with joy and love. Because that resentment, that grudge goes into that money and it, you know, we have a consciousness of love. People feel it when they come here the first time. And that's why, because what we do, we do in love. What we give, we give in love. We give from a cheerful heart, whether it's working in the back or whether it's taking out trash or whatever we're doing. And so is our money. We give with a cheerful heart. One of my favorite scriptures is Malachi 3.10, and it says, Bring all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be food in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will open the windows of heaven for you and pour out blessings for you that there shall not be room enough to hold them all. And I like that scripture because it's daring us to prove the law. It's daring us to prove that the blessings and abundance of God, of, of spirit, of the universe are inherently ours. You know, tithing originally meant giving 10% of supplies or money to the temple or to the church. Um, and very few of us tithe. Um, I understand that. That's, it's scary. <laughs> um, that's why we have a pledge campaign and not a tithe campaign. But I'd like for you, as we're, as we're doing this pledge campaign, um, to join me in an experiment. For the next three weeks, watch for any unplanned or unexpected income and feed flow 10% of that unexpected good. So we are going to accept the challenge of the scripture. We are going to prove that there shall not be room enough to hold all the abundance. If you've been here for a while, you've heard, you've heard my story, because, but, but it's so apropos for the pledge campaign. When I was at Founders Church in Los Angeles, we had a prosperity seminar with Dr. Catherine Ponder who is the guru of all gurus on prosperity. And as the seminar was in the planning stage, Catherine's son, a marketing manager, told us, you know, this seminar will change people's thinking for the moment. Why not continue with an ongoing prosperity class that will deepen this idea for them? Well, we decided that that would be a wonderful idea, and Reverend Arthur Chang, the senior minister of Founders, asked at one of our brainstorming sessions, how much should we charge for our prosperity course? And I said, nothing. Let's ask them to give 10% of their unexpected income during the course of this class. That way, if it doesn't work for them, they won't be out anything, and if it does work for them, it will work for us. We agreed. I brought this really ugly purple piggy bank and put it on a pedestal under a light in our chapel where the class was being held. And we had about 60 people that participated in the course. And we asked each, and we started each class by asking people who had unexpected income to come forward, feed the pig, and tell their story if they wanted to. And we kept a chart so we could see how full our pig was getting. And I think this class ran for about 16 weeks. By the end of the course, we had fed Prosperity Pig a total of $17,000. That represents 170000 in unexpected or unplanned income. So that's a bit under $3,000 a person in four months. Can you imagine how many people would have signed up for the class if we told them it was going to be $3,000? <laughs> but one of the evolutions, and this is really what's so fun, that took place over the course of the class was that participants began to see abundance as more than just money but as a divine circulation in which they were immersed. And it was reflected in what they began to count 
as unexpected income. You know, at first it was all about money, a check that came in unexpectedly, a refund of some kind. But after a while it grew. Someone was taken to a really nice dinner and she fed the pig 10% of what would have been her share of the dinner. Someone else found a dress she had wanted at a half price sale and she fed the pig 10% of the half she didn't have to pay. But the one I loved the most was a gentleman who said, this class has changed my whole consciousness. I was stopped by a policeman for speeding this past week. Before, I would have been mean and surly with that policeman. But this time, I was really nice. And the policeman smiled at me, gave me a warning, and told me to slow down. I know with my old consciousness, I would have been fined. So I figured that ticket would have cost me $240, and I fed the pig $24 of the money for the ticket I didn't have to pay. <laughs> so as we change our consciousness, we begin to own that cheerful heart. You know, we really do. Um, Uh, by the end of the class, almost all students had changed their thinking about their own abundance. They saw increased prosperity in their lives. And they were giving with a cheerful heart. So they had learned to trust spirit, to know that God is our source, our one and only source. In many cases, like the man with the policeman, they saw their unexpected good as a direct response to an inner change in consciousness that allowed them to trust in spirit. Moshe Salzman was driving down the street in a sweat because he had an important meeting and couldn't find a parking place. Looking up to heaven, he said, Lord, take pity on me. If you find me a parking place, I will go to Shabbat every Saturday for the rest of my life, and I promise to give up gambling. Miraculously, a parking place appeared. Moishe looked to heavens again and said, Never mind, Lord, I found one myself. <laughs> you know, this isn't as absurd as one might think. I remember, years ago, I remember a woman who put in a prayer request for health. She was having some real health challenges. And so we treated, we do our tr treatment every single day for a week, we treated, and she came to me next Sunday and said, oh, my doctor found out what was wrong, I'm fine now. You know, she didn't say thanks for the prayer work because she didn't connect the prayer work that was done on her behalf with finding an avenue of healing through the doctor. So that's one of the lessons that we need to get. The idea that when we have demonstrations, give thanks, give thanks to this power and presence that is responding always to the consciousness that we give out. So this woman, rather like Moshe, she might have said to our ministry of prayer, never mind the prayers, my doctor took care of it. <laughs> you know, in Ephesians, Ephesians, you'll have to help me say that. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> Chapter 1, verse 18, Paul writes to the Ephesians about their personal relationship with God. He writes, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. For Paul, the eyes of our heart means that spiritual insight that is propelled by faith and understanding. This kind of spiritual insight, it fills us with enthusiasm, passion, emotion. And it's excitement we feel as we experience the power and presence of spirit at work through us. And that's what we can say, that we are the owner of a cheerful heart. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Thank you, namaste. Right. 
So I want to invite everybody to stand. This is an awesome song that I learned during the, uh, the virtual, it was the virtual CSL conference. What, uh, 2021, I think. Um, really fun, it's called Make a Joyful Noise. It goes like this. Everybody make a joyful noise. Everybody make a joyful noise. You know how to make a joyful noise. Clap your hands and lift your voice. Everybody make a joyful noise. Everybody lift your voice in song. Everybody lift your voice in song. Everybody is a voice in song. You can do it, sing along. Everybody lift your voice in song. Everybody clap on two and four, two, four, two, four. Everybody clap on two and four. Yeah, everybody clap on two and four. Make it louder, make it roar. Everybody clap on two and four. Living big for love's the way to go. Living big for love's the way to go. Living big's the way to go. You can do it, let it flow. Living big for love's the way to go. We intend to make a joyful noise. We intend to make a joyful noise. You know how to make a joyful noise. Clap your hands and lift your voice. Everybody make a joyful noise. Everybody make a joyful noise. Come on, sing it for me. Everybody make a joyful noise. You know how to make a joyful noise. Clap your hands and lift your voice. Everybody make a joyful noise. Everybody make a joyful noise. Yeah. Fun one. It is a fun one. Okay. Speaking of money through the whole talk, it's time for offering. <laughs> So, please join me in our offering affirmation. My gift goes forth to heal, prosper, and bless all that it touches. It is evidence of my conviction that God is the source and substance of my supply. I share generously of my good, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Let's sing our opening song since we didn't get to it today. Oh, good. It's a, it's a great one. It's up to me to give up my heart. Love is my decision. No one else can tell me to stop. And once I decide to change my 
So I do give thanks for all of you who give with a cheerful heart. <laughs> I really do. Um, I think it's fun that we can that we can poke fun at ourselves and fun at life. I am amazed that most of us are seniors and we can act like idiots and have a great time doing it. <laughs> it, just, it just shows how creative we are and how safe this place is. So, <laughs> Okay, so let's close this portion out in, in prayer and please join us for refreshments. Um, I'm just knowing right now that there is one mind. It is the mind of God, and it's the mind that we use. And its attributes are love, truth, beauty, joy, harmony, peace, abundance, and this is what we are made of and from. So as we go about our week, we share our abundance with each other, with the people on the street, with the people we meet, just a smile at a grocery aisle, at the person in the same grocery aisle with you, just some way of allowing that power, that creative power, that cheerful heart to shed its light on someone else. I speak my word for anyone experiencing any kind of a challenge and know that right where that challenge is, is the healing power of God and is at work right now. I give thanks to be a part of this center, this spiritual family, which is truly my home. And with all of that, I simply let it go and let God do its perfect work as we say together, and so it is. And let me stand and sing, stand please.